Sometimes, with the hectic pace of life, you need to slow down, maybe even stop. Just pause a moment and listen to just how much God loves you. Well, hello again and welcome to Moments of Truth with me, Pastor David, coming from Maranatha Christian Assembly. And as always, I hope that you are coping well and growing stronger every day. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Okay, so today what we want to search the scripture or talk about really is deception. Right? Deception. Now, deception is um, it's a word that strikes fear sometimes, um, terror in our hearts, you know. Um, and the reasons are simple. None of us likes to be deceived. Um, nobody wants to be deceived and all of us at some point or another have experienced some degree, some level of deception. And depending on degree, the degree and the level, that usually tells the extent to which it has affected us. But what can be certain is that you do most certainly have a memory in your mind of some moment, some time, some period in your life where you were deceived. And it's an awful feeling, I know. The thing is that all too often, when we think about deception, sometimes we think about people or a person, you know? Um, the memory is usually attached to an event that would have had a primary character, a primary person that would have, or, or a group of people. And that's how we usually think. And in a certain sense, that's understandable. That's understandable because it's human beings that we interact with and it would have been the human beings that we'd have been talking about. Um, notwithstanding misunderstanding, there are circumstances where individuals set out to deceive others. And you and I are no, we're not immune to that. We will experience that from time to time. The thing is, you'll be wondering, well, if I'm saying it's, it's, it's normal for us to think about people, but at the same time, I also want to say that is not the primary area where we should be thinking. When you want to guard against deception, what you need to really focus on is discernment. And discernment is really, uh, it's God-based, it's God-powered, all right? And um, I don't have the time to explain the difference where um, Satan has his operatives that he provides with information. And all too often, we find situations where it can seem to be kind of confusing, you know? Um, but it's not discernment. Uh, case in point was like the slave girl in Acts, where she was able to tell the future, predict the future. She was doing it from a satanic source. All right. Now, somebody, you know, one would want to comment or could comment and take the angle and say, well, you know, it could appear like she was able to do this and it could seem very godly. Um, and she was saying good stuff. These men are servants of the Most High God. Now, only discernment that comes from God, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost power discernment, is, which is what discernment is, is what's going to help you and I to be, you and me to be able to, 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 to manage the many tricks and schemes that we will face on a daily basis. Many tricks and schemes that will, in fact, have human operatives, but the humans are not the master plan behind it. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says in John 8, chapter 44, he was a murderer, speaking of the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, the NIV says he speaks his native language. That's all he speaks, lies. For he is a liar and the father of lies. That's who the devil is, the father of lies. So um, when human beings like you and, and me, when we are going about life and responding to what we hear in our minds and all of that, it's, if we're not very careful, we could find ourselves saying things, leaning towards angles and ideas that are really um, sent there by the enemy. 
And as I mentioned, people are not the major problem. That's why. That's why I can say people are not the major problem. The major problem is that it is human beings like us that the devil uses. And it's going to be also important to do two things. Always be able to do like Jesus, see beyond Peter, <laughs> see beyond, you know, and when Jesus rebuked Peter, said, get thee behind me, Satan. He was speaking to the spirit that was up. Um, he was speaking to Peter, but he was also addressing the spirit from which speaker, Peter spoke. Right. And you and I have got to be able to look beyond the emotion of the moment that would tend us to cause us to look at the person rather than the subject at hand. And what it is, is here is the father of lies using a person to try to cause discord, to try to um, cause disruption and certainly to cause us to be deceived. We need to be able to depend on God. And as we seek and ask God for discernment as we go through life, because we're going to have to apply it all the time, we must depend on God's discretion. So ask God for discernment as you go about life. You have decisions to make, you have conversations to weigh. And even when you know it seems like or you have experienced um, deception, um, if I could phrase it this way, take it in good stride, knowing that God will not allow you to experience anything beyond where he, he can help you to handle. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, God is faithful and he is indeed faithful and will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will make the way of escape, all right, that you would be able to bear it. So that's from that verse, I want you to remember the phrase, depend on God's discretion. The stuff that we go through from time to time can cause us to be very, very wary, very, very wary, very cautious about um, he, uh, the, the relationships we build, very cautious about you know, the, the, what we listen to and how we listen to and who we want to believe in. And, and also the flip side of that, it causes us to want to form judgments. That person is deceitful. That group is deceitful. That whole section there is based on deceit. The real enemy is the father of lies. The father of lies who also wants to bring disruption to God's church. You and I are operating in the church that's part members of his body, co-workers and joint heirs with him. And if we become um, timid and, and hesitant to even relate with each other, it will affect the body. So we need to be able to embrace discernment as we go through life and continue to apply ourselves to becoming part of the work of God, depending on God's discretion as well in what we go through. Because from time to time, he will allow some difficulties to cross your way. He will allow you to become deceived from time to time. More and more, as you learn to deal with it, as you mature in Christ, you will find that its impact is not as negative. God will use it actually for your betterment, for your strengthening, because all things, including those areas. So as I close, one of the things that we've spoken about here on Moments of Truth before is forgiveness. And in just in case, I know today we're talking about desert, um, deception and count, communicating that the primary counter for that is discernment by God's Holy Spirit and learn to depend on God's discretion to take you through and you will be able to do well as you become more like Christ. What will disturb you is if you cannot forgive. So you can, I can't uh, um, spend the time now to talk about it, but let God help you forgive that person who may have deceived you to let that memory be banished into the sea of forgetfulness and allow you to forgive and move on with your life to become all that God has in store for you. I trust that today this message has been a blessing to you and I want to encourage you 
like our page Facebook uh, on Facebook, like like the video on YouTube, and consider subscribing to our channel. All right. So may God bless you, real good. Till next time. Stay well. <laughs>